This is another interview question from Cracking the Coding Interview. And the question is, given two strings, write a method to decide if one is a permutation of another. So the question is probably what is a permutation? And um, first you have to answer that. So if you glance at the Wikipedia page for a permutation, you'll see that it's just, um, if you consider every member of a set, you can arrange them in any different sequence. So every, all of the sequences uh, that you can arrange them in, those are all of the different permutations. You can see you have a red a ball, a green ball, and a blue ball, and you can rearrange this as a red ball, a blue ball, and a green ball, and so on and so forth for every different combination of those. And the order counts, right? And since we're dealing with strings, you could just think of these as anagrams, right? So an, an anagram is if you shuffle the um, shuffle the words around or the letters around to make different words uh, so let's go back to the code here um, so now that we know what a permutation is we know how to test this and the other interesting thing you need to consider is what about case sensitivity does that matter uh, what about white space does that matter uh, so we're going to we're, we're gonna have to solve those problems too um, and also input validation, uh, if, if one string is not the length of the other string, obviously it can't be a permutation of it, right? And since we're thinking about permutations and not anagrams actually, I think the white space probably does matter since white space is part of the string. So um, let's, let's go into it with that with white space mattering and uh, first we'll do a length check too because that'll automatically disqualify our strings if they're not the same length. But what I've got here is two examples of a string. This one is a permutation of the second one. A1 is a permutation of B1. And I've got another test here where A2 and B2 are not permutations of each other because in the second one you've got two Ds and no E. Uh, so we've got a little test harness here. We've got a um, we've got a program or a, uh, a function called isPerm and it takes string A and string B it first does a length check and then we'll actually have the algorithm down here and then we're just checking to see the output and it should say true or false because this is a this is a boolean question and it's either going to be a permutation or it's not going to be a permutation there's no other kind of answer you should receive um, so in the book it's actually interesting that they uh, say you should ask whether or not this is a unicode string or an ascii string and the reason being an ASCII string is only 128 characters tops, where Unicode you have a much larger character set. Um, and the reason they do this is because if it's ASCII you can do some tricks where instead of using something like a hash map you can use an array of size 128 to map all the characters. Um, I think we're not going to do that, we're just going to use a hash map even though the actual solution in the book is using an array of 128 characters because I think it's it's fairly um, uh, strange to assume you'd ever have anything not Unicode <laughs> this day and age. Uh, almost every website is in every single language or every every uh, every possible language you want to handle it for. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to not handle Unicode. Uh, so I think we're going to use a hash map. But first, there's an even easier solution, and the solution is uh, you can sort both of the strings to check if their permutation is and then just compare them. So let's look at that solution if we sort them. And what is sorting again? Sorting is in log uh, log in time complexity, right? And I think we're gonna see the other solution with the hash map. It'll take more memory, but it'll be a, a linear a linear solution. So Let's, let's look at the slower solution first, and what we're going to have to do is um, sort both of them. So let's check this out. We're going to do um, uh, some kind of an array sort. So I'm going to say uh, car uh, r1 equals a dot two car array. And we should be able to do arrays. This is a Java utility arrays dot sort and we should be able to sort this car array same thing with the other one car array 2 a dot 2 car array right, it's actually going to be b uh, and we'll say arrays dot sort 
and we'll say R2. And um, what you can do to transform these arrays back into a string is pass it into the string constructor. So you can say return a new string uh, R1. And we can compare these. String dot equals new string R2. So there you have it. That's the uh, that's the solution using sorting. And again, sorting it's slow. Um, so you you probably if you were actually going to do this in some real life situation, this might be the best because it's very easy to understand. But you might want to check the size of the input because if you end up sorting a massive string, it could be bad. So let's run this application. We're just going to run it directly, and you're going to see that's true. And then how about the other one? Uh, let's see. Sys o. It'll be is perm, and it'll be a two compared to b two. So we'll run that as a Java application. And yeah, so this should be true, this should be false. Um, and that's what we got, true and false. So this is the sorting algorithm. This is the slower algorithm because we know sorting in a best case scenario, it's, it's just in long end. Uh, those are the best sorting algorithms possible. So now let's check out a faster solution that's more complicated and we can do that with a hash map. Um, so what we're going to do is build this map. It'll be a map of cars and integers because we're going to count each car. Car map. And it'll be a hash map. Uh, all right. And we're going to go through the first one a.2curve. And we'll say car map dot uh, we'll say if car map dot contains key C car map dot put C car map dot get uh, C plus one uh, otherwise we'll say car map dot put C1 since we saw it once and uh, we're all we're gonna have to do is just go through this map again with our second uh, our second string and then just check to make sure that we have uh, everything and it might even be easier to just build two maps and then um, compare the size of the maps uh, you could also um, you could also go through the map again and subtract out the numbers to see if that um, and see if they all equal zero at the end. That would be an interesting way to do it. So there's a couple of different ways. The the problem you basically have to loop twice though is the thing. You're gonna have to touch each character in each string uh, once, right? So you're gonna have to loop twice. Um, so uh, we're still it's still gonna be a linear solution. So we're gonna say car c. Uh, b dot two two car array and I think we're gonna do the subtract out one because that sounds pretty interesting we're gonna say car uh, map we're gonna say if car map car map dot contains key and it'll be um, C we're going to say car map dot um, put and it'll be for that key and then it'll be car map dot uh, get c minus one. So this will be an interesting solution. And what's the else here? If it doesn't contain the key, we're going to return false because it's not a permutation. Now, why is that the case? Uh, that would be the case because um, if you don't have the character in there, you're missing something. So this would be 
like if if we are missing something in the second string that we had in the first okay so this is going to be kind of interesting here uh, we're going to do we're going to do one more loop and we're going to say um, if it's not zero then we have a problem <laughs> so we're going to loop over um, the values and we should be able to say car map dot values if i does not equal zero return false return true so this may not be the optimal solution but i just thought it was kind of interesting to do this and still the thing is if if you're um if you're doing a big o analysis this is linear this is linear this is linear um and this is actually less than linear this this one in particular so but even if you had three times in you know that that goes to in because you drop the constants in big o analysis so it's still a linear algorithm even if you had to loop twice so we're going to run this see what happens and again we should get the same output because all we're doing in this case, we're just mapping the the composition of the first array, and then we're trying to mirror that in the second pass, and then we're just making sure that we subtracted everything out. So we ended up with the um, the same solution. Look how complicated this is, though, compared to this very simple. Uh, what is this? A five line solution? Much much easier, right? So kind of interesting. Um, to do both solutions. This one is slower but simpler and this one is faster but much more complex. It's going to use more memory as well. And uh, this, the cool thing is we didn't use two maps here. Um, so, and this one will handle Unicode, right? So this will definitely handle Unicode. It won't be like the um, one from the book that only handled ASCII with a small character set of 128 characters. So. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'll have more videos up and there's gonna be a link to this code in the video. Thanks.